Hey, what's up? It is the Ant-Man channel on this Tuesday, the 8th of July, 2014, and I am your host. I got a blitz today, man. I got like four articles I want to get through today. Things that I haven't read. I have this article from June 30th that I really wanted to read, and it's a, it, it intrigued me because... I had studied the book of 2 Samuel not too, not too long ago. Probably one of my favorite books now because of the mighty men that used to kick it with David. Some of the coolest stories you'll ever you know, come across in, in the Bible are the stories of David and the men that used to be with, around him. These guys were legendary warriors, dude. Like, it's so amazing, man. I mean, to read the, the chronicles of the kings of of. of Israel, especially David, because the kingdom was, you know, probably never as uh, adventurous as it was in those times, because when Solomon came to the throne, it was all given to him, and it said, you know, God gave him rest on all his borders and all that, and, you know, he lived a, he lived a peaceful life, and there weren't, and there weren't any wars, really, so, um, yeah, King David is a crazy, crazy character in the Bible, man, if you like if you like adventurous stories, man, I know why a lot of people don't read the Bible, and that's because, you know, it's about God, and people don't want to have anything to do with God, because you know what that brings upon your conscience, that you need to, uh, I, I think everybody already ultimately knows, you know, that God exists. I think that um, the book of Hebrews, pretty much, and the book of Romans, pretty much, cancels out any, you know, I think it's like Romans one twenty that just shows you you know there are no atheists out there you all know you all know you all know well but it's just that we i don't i don't know how to explain it if you guys know who rc sproul is he had a show last night um the god who is there is the, the title of the show that he had last night and what he described in that was pretty much that the fact that that is that the matter of of um or that is the issue at hand is w uh, with the bible that is that people don't want God to be in their thoughts. They don't want God to be in their mind, in their in their life. And it's because, you know, sin blinds us. Sin the sin deceives us and we become hard-hearted because of sin because uh the worldly person will say, "You're an idiot, Matt, because you're a Christian. Don't you know that people die every day? Don't you know that, you know, people cheat on each other every day and whatnot?" And I say, yeah, duh, the Bible tells you that. The Bible tells you we're fallen creation. We're all fallen. And we all do what's wrong. Even though we want to do what's right, we just are incapable of doing what's right. Unless we are regenerated, renewed. Unless we are transformed uh, by being born again believers by the uh, gospel. That's all, uh, you know, that's the only way it can happen. You can only become a good person by only... Uh, fixing your eyes on He who is good, the only one who is good in the entire world, Yahweh, Yeshua, Jesus Christ. But I'm going to get into this article, and that's David's confidence that he could kill Goliath came from killing apex predators. I know in the news a lot, you hear about hunters that are getting mad because people are going around killing animals and stuff and whatnot. And you'll even see some lunatics out there that'll say, that you should be murdered, I hope you get killed by somebody because you go around killing animals. That is a just, you got to be really confused to, to not understand that there is an order to life. That there is, in God's eyes, and not even just in God's eyes, but in practical, just in practical uh, just ways to look at things, man. You got to understand that the human being is capable of more than an animal. We have a mind. We have... A heart that, you know what I mean, can, can be worked for good or evil, but de depends on what your desires are, you know, it depends on what kind of person you are, but men can be so much uh, better than uh, what they are today, and, you know, that comes through reading the word, man, you cannot be good on your own, whatever you perceive as good is uh, miscalculated, it's, uh, it falls short of the grand holiness of the standard of God, so, the following column was taken from Doug, Doug Giles' best-selling book, uh, Rise, Kill, and Eat, A Theology of Hunting from Genesis to Revelation. Pretty much everyone and his dog are familiar with David's epic downing of the Philistine, uh, Philistine, the Philistine's champion Goliath. Excuse me. Movies have been made about this ruddy teenager taking a simple slingshot again 
against this blathery monster and dropping him like a bad habit. Sorry, my, my eyes are getting fixed on this right now because sometimes in the morning I'm a little... I gotta get the gears going, you know what I mean? Not only did David down the blasphemous jackass, he also took Goliath's own sword and decapitated him. You know, just to make certain that he doesn't pop back up like Jason Voorhees and terrify any further Israeli, uh, Israel's uh, feckless forces, the narrative of David smoking Gath's greatest and the stuff of is of the stuff of legends. Excuse me. Uh, I'm going to read that again. The narrative of David smoking Gath's greatest is the stuff of legends, an inspiring tale of faith and determination against staggering odds, and truth be told against the disdain and unbelief of his jealous and un and beleaguered brethren. Um, David, yeah, he wasn't... You know, a lot of people will say silly things like God guided the stone and it hit him in the head because God made it down. David already knew how to use a slingshot or whatever, a sling and a rock. He killed a lion and he killed a bear before he ever faced Goliath. I mean, I don't know if you've ever ran into a bear or a lion, but I can imagine that you would be paralyzed with fear. So when David saw Goliath, he didn't look at him and say, Oh man, this guy's tremendously big. Uh, you know, like, even though he was saying, where are, where is your God, and what's up, like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know what, where's Israel's champion, you know, this and that, he was talking a lot of good, so, you know what David did, he saw himself in God's favor, he said, who is this, he, this, this is how he refers to Goliath, and I, I, I laugh every time I see it in the Bible, he says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine, like, pretty much, you know what I mean, like, he, he refers to him that he's not under God's covenant, that he's not under God's favor, and that he's going to destroy him, pretty much. How are you going to let this guy talk down to you when this guy's not even... You know what I mean? This guy is a... He's an abomination in the eyes of God, first of all. And second of all, he's trying to fight against God's people. How can you cower in fear against that? And, you know, I could go on and on. I dig this story so much, I did an oil painting from Gustav Dorr's famous litho uh, lithograph to adorn my walls so that when I wake up in the morning and see little David holding Goliath's severed bloody dripping noggin, it can inspire me to not be a wuss, but rather have faith and go face the giants in my life. Life imitates art, and as far as I'm concerned, it beats the crap out of just hang in there cat poster. Ah, uh, a just hang in there cat poster. Well, yeah, you know, the world, it offers you really bad advice. Like, just, like, hang in there, guys, or follow your heart, and uh, 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 uh. You know what, dude? I, I read in the Bible that if you follow your heart, you're a fool. Your heart is deceitful and evil. I don't know about you guys, and I know Christians that'll deny this, because I have talked to Christians that I try to relate to, and they'll be like, I don't know, bro, I mean, I'm holy, ha, ha, ha. And it's just like... I don't even know if you're saved talking like that, but sometimes when I wake up, I have revenge on my mind. I have hate on my mind. I want to knock someone out for, 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 you know, for inflicting pain on me. You know what I mean? But then when I get into the word of God, man, I love God's word because then I realize my conscience is clear. God took away all my shame. He took away all my guilt. He took away all the condemnation of this you know, of the weakness of this flesh, dude. And one of the things that Christians don't do these days is that they don't want to bear this. They don't want to suffer for Christ's name. They want to hear, oh, Jesus loves you and you're going to be rich someday. And you know what, dude? We're made perfect through suffering. Just like Jesus was made, you know, the, the you know, the God over everything. It was because he, he, he had to earn that through suffering and obedience and faithfulness. And, and it's not easy. It's not easy. If it were easy, everyone would do it. You know what I mean? I had someone tell me today, you're dangerous. People like you should... Please stay away from talking to other people. If you're a man out there, you should be very, very, very ashamed to sound that way. That's a cowardly way to act. The way th my whole entire YouTube channel is dedicated to religious liberty and the First Amendment. I am exercising my right to say whatever the hell I feel like. And anyone that wants to come against me for that, I challenge you. Shut me up. If you don't like what I'm saying, 
You're not going to tell me to shut up and I'm not going to listen to you. And second, if you want me to shut up, why don't you make me? All right? I'm a man. I'm not going to listen to nobody. I'm not afraid of you. I'm not afraid of the president. I'm not afraid of the cartels in Mexico. I don't give a damn who you are. I don't care about your position. I don't care about how much money you have. I have no respect. I am not impressed by all of that stuff. I'm a man of God. I'm a man of God. You may come to me with a sword and a shield, but I come to you in the name of the living God. Straight up. As, fam as familiar as this story is, what, I'm, what I've seldom heard pontificated upon what David has uh, got his godly confidence to kill this foul Philistine uh, via the prior stain of a lion and a bear, 1 Samuel 17, 34, 37, which I just said pretty much. Check it out. God's people initially tried to discourage David from taking Goliath on. They wanted him to be a scared punk like they were and just sit on the sidelines of life and complain about the problem instead of destroying the beast by facing it head on. Thankfully, David was not persuaded by their pathetic, pulsanimous, faith-eviscerating words. Yep, the young shepherd was having none of his puny bro's fear of unbelief. And the thing that put him over the top with holy confidence was not an army grant song, uh, an, I mean, an Amy Grant song, excuse me, but the fact that God, his words, not mine, verse, verses 34 through, and 37, enabled him to kill a lion and a bear. And the same God that empowered him to dispatch two apex predators was going to help him fall or fell this mouthy maggot who's talking smack about God and his people. I mean, one of the worst things I see in today's culture is how everybody has this disdain and hostility toward Christians and we... Everybody talks so badly about us and what what do we do? What do we honestly what do we do but talk about love and faith and forgiveness and hope and and uh, what do we do? What do we do to you so that that you oh do we hurt your feelings is that why? I mean in a society that's so isolated in in their computers and their iPhones and their video games, television shows, whatever. It's like as if everybody is just I mean I don't know what is going on with people today but to say that, to, to be offended so easily by every little thing is a cowardly, shameful thing, man. I mean, where has virtue gone? Where is spirituality these days? Where is the mentality of someone who is willing to face fear, face danger? You know, I'm reading this book right here. It's called Wild at Heart. It's a really good book for any of you cowards out there that want to read a good book and you're not and you don't know that you're made to be a man you're adventurous wild dangerous all these things man but you want to be this secure you want to get a secure job and live a secure life and be all secure and blah, 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 and play church and and you know what dude it's not going to help you you by nature are made to be this like explorer who wants to go out and figure i mean i've even heard people say that it's not worth their time to figure out how the entire universe was created and all this stuff. And that's sad. There is nothing more enlightening. There is nothing harder to understand than God. If you can, if you want to take on that challenge to read the Bible and tr not try, but rely on God to give you wisdom to understand everything, then because because the, the the Bible is not an allegory. There is nothing allegorical about the Bible. It tells you everything. If you read the Bible, there is a answer to every circumstance, situation, and obstacle that you face in your life. Ever. Ever. It gives you the answers to all your problems. Yet, I mean, I, I'm just rambling here, really. But, I mean, I, what I want to say is that if you want to really, really know what you're made of you want to know who you are you want to know what you're capable of the potential that lives within you that is asleep right now read the bible you will become so powerful your mind will blow every single morning when you wake up and realize when you take a fresh you know when you take a breath of fresh air that you are made in the image of god and he actually died for you so that you wouldn't have to sit around like a coward and 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 cop out and live in security and oh and, and make excuses for everything and blame everyone else for everything that's happened to you. It's really amazing. Now help me here. If killing animals is a sin, then why did the Lord God deliver David from certain death from supernaturally assisting this young lad to slay these four-legged uh, marauders? 
Oh, oh, did that ruin your God hates killing animals fairy tale? Oh, <laughs> oh, and by the way, it was not recorded whether or not David uh, ate these two would be sheep stealers after he whacked them, which highlights the fact that not every animal killed in the scriptures became table fare. Or, yeah. Well, anyways, this is a picture of Doug Giles' cool po or portrait of David holding Goliath's head. I really like this. I really like this portrait, man. I mean, what? That's beautiful art, man. This picture right here, man, should show you uh, and inspire you, man. That you are a man of God. If David, who was the youngest in his family, his dad thought he was, you know, he wasn't worthy of being king and everyone in his family disdained him and he was the youngest and the smallest and God chose him and he delivered Israel through him and he was... He had humble beginnings and all that, man. Imagine what God can do for you. So just, I mean, just think about it. Uh, I'll be back in a couple minutes. I'm going to post some more videos. So you guys, if you like my videos, subscribe. And if you don't, kick rocks. Because I don't care who likes me and who does. I'm not the sociopath that is breeded in these indoctrination camps where they tell you, uh... You know, whatever is right for you is right for you. Whatever is right for me is right for me. No. Repent. Repent. Because there is God. There is one God. And He can save you. Peace out.